Hey, Kevin here at Skylabs doing another video. Today we wanted to talk about our top five vintage receivers you can pick up for under 300 bucks. Stick around. I think we serviced around 200 receivers last year for either customers or for us for resale. And these receivers specifically usually don't have expensive repair bills. Um, a lot of times they come in working, they're still working out of 40 years with no service done to them at all whatsoever. And they're kind of tanks. They're kind of the ones that people overlook. They're low wattage. We do have one in the 40 watt range. Otherwise, most of these are between 15 to 18 watts per channel. However, if you're looking for a receiver for maybe a den or an office uh, bedroom, a small living room type of thing, any one of these would be just fine. Actually, one of the ones on the list um, was my personal receiver for four or five years. It's one of the very first vintage pieces I ever owned. So before we get into the list, I wanna go through the rules. We did have a few criteria that we wanted to make sure these receivers had before they made the list. And the first one was, it had to be from the golden era. So uh, between 1970 and 1980, we kind of feel like that's when consumer hi-fi audio was at its prime, at least for you know cost for what you get so that was rule number one uh, the second rule was, was no fiber board which excluded a lot of techniques products um, some early sansui products and what i mean by that is they would sometimes to cut costs they would use a fiber board back panel for the screw down terminals for your speakers and or the rca in and outputs and um, if you know, if you get water on that, that material kind of balloons and we just don't want that. And it's same with the bottom panel. Sometimes they would use it on the bottom. So no fiber board and we're looking for stuff from the seventies. And with that, let's go to number five. And at number five, we've got the Onkyo TX 1500 MK2. This is a, this was made from 1979 to 1980. It's got 15 watts per channel. And it's the newest one on the list, as in everything else is older than that on this one. For the positives, I would say the look, um, definitely, and the ability to change the look even. So if you don't like the original uh, amber type glow that the original one came with, you can switch it to blue or green or purple or whatever color you want. And it actually accepts that color change really well. Some receivers, in my opinion, do not. Um, some receivers are kind of stuck with that incandescent look in order for them to look good. Just my opinion, but the Onkyo, the TX, especially the MK2 series does change colors really well. Um, the negatives on this one would be the silk screening on the face plate is kind of fragile. So you want to make sure that you're not cleaning it with anything uh, abrasive. Even warm water might pull some of that lettering off. And you'll see a lot of times when you see these, the power above the push power switch, some of the lettering is missing. And that's because either somebody used their dirty fingers a lot or somebody tried deep cleaning it. So you wanna watch out for the lettering on these. The other thing would be there's a metal case on for the top, which is good. However, they put a cheap vinyl sticker on top of it. And from a distance, it looks good, but once you get closer up to it, you know, it is what it is. How, you know, Keep in mind, this is an entry level receiver um, that still has AM, FM, phono, and tape, plus speakers A and B. So pretty good for the money, especially if you're picking one up for a couple hundred bucks. Um, and that's our number five. All right, coming in at number four, uh, the Sony STR6036. These things are built like tanks and 15 watts a channel, made in 1973. You really can't go wrong. So if you come across one of these, you can get it for a couple hundred bucks working, nab it, perfect. The good part is, is probably the wood cabinet. Wood cabinet is, it's nice. It's a real wood veneer. I like the, the smoked plastic panel that, um, and once again, these take lamps really well, especially of different color. They come stock green, but if you wanted to put blue in there or, or whatever, they do look good. So that's a definite positive. Negatives would be speaker screw down terminals using a flathead. Really annoying, but get spade connectors for it and you'll be fine. And that is number four. 
All right, so coming in at number three, we've got a Yamaha, the only Yamaha on the list. And this is the CR400, maybe the most expensive one on the list. It's, it's riding that 300 mark pretty good with shipping. But however, it's probably maybe the best built one on the list as well. Um, the wood cabinet is exceptional on these. They're usually in good condition. Um, when I find them, for some reason, Yamaha owners seem to take care of their stuff. The negative for these can also be the positive. Um, some people think they look a little bland, or some people like the sleek, um, non-flashy look. And that just depends on which you prefer, you know, but it's definitely more reserved um, approach to its looks. And these do not take LEDs well, by the way. Um, if this is a, a first time vintage receiver for you and you know you think you might wanna try putting LEDs in, in it, um, this is not the receiver you wanna do it on, installing LEDs. They're a pain in the ass, not gonna lie. Um, besides that, killer receiver, no question. 1976, I believe, and 15 watts per channel, plenty of power. Um, same with AM, FM, auxiliary and phono, good to go. That's our number three, Yamaha CR400. Coming in at number two, we've got the Sony STR6055. Uh, this one was made in 1973 era, and this has got the most wattage of any of the other receivers, including the number one on the list at 40 watts per channel. Um, definitely more power by more than double than most of them. So if you do need extra power, this would be my first one I'd be looking for, for sure. Um, this thing's built like a tank, once again. They're bulletproof. A little detail they did on this receiver was they, uh, they put a acrylic cover around the FM AM tuning capacitor, which is just one extra step to try and isolate that, uh, that circuit from the rest of the amplifier. So they didn't skimp on this one. The wood cases for them are really thick, really good. Um, and these take LEDs well too, especially green. They're easy to install and they look really good once you do put L the green LEDs in them. The other thing with this one would be, once again, it's got that, um, it's got flathead screw down speaker terminals, which is a bummer, but get some spades. You can get around it. It's not the end of the world. It still has your phono, auxiliary, AM, FM, everything you really need there. That was our number two pick, which was the Sony STR6055. Okay, number one spot. You made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. We are talking about the Harman Kardon 330C. It is the little giant. These things are incredible. I had one as a personal receiver, one of my first vintage receivers for five or six years. It's amazing how much power these things have. They're definitely underrated. They definitely sound like they have 50 watts per channel in them, and but they don't. I powered a set of uh, Sirwin Vegas off of one of these and you could have easily gotten the cops called on you if you wanted. It was that robust. The looks are amazing. It's got this uh, smoked acrylic panel in front of the, uh, the FM tuning dial. It kind of wraps over the top. And it's those details, I think, that really set this one aside. Also, the, the red power button, uh, illuminated indicator, super cool. Um, you can put your finger on it and pretend like you're ET if for those people that are old enough to remember that. And um, once again, 15 watts per channel, I believe, 1976. Yep, 1976 when it came out. The drawbacks would be, um, it, it is just a metal case. There's no wood case for it, um, but at least they didn't try putting a faux wood on it. It's just a black case, which I think looks better. It, the the faceplate's a little on the thin side. Uh, it dents easy, but you shouldn't have a reason to dent your receiver anyway, so I'm kind of calling that a wash. These things are incredibly easy to work on. The layout on the inside is amazing. You can get to every single board without moving anything. You literally flip it upside down and there's all your solder points. Definitely as far as a, a tech goes, a tech rating, this thing is a 10 out of 10. Um, super simple, not overcomplicated, plenty of power, really nice looks. The Harman Kardon 330C, for low wattage entry level receivers, I don't see anything touching it. And at this price point, it's crazy. 
you know, when you, when you can pick one of these up for under 300 bucks working, um, it's, it's criminal. Cause if that was a Sansui or a Marantz, even a Pioneer, uh, you'd double that price. And I think a lot of it's just because people don't know to look for them. So there's a tip out there, grab one. You will not be disappointed. And that was our number one, the Harman Kardon 330C. I hope you liked this video. Hopefully you, you found a receiver on there that is gonna work for you in a smaller room or with some really efficient speakers. If there was something I missed, if there's a receiver that you think this should have been on there, I don't see why it's not on there, leave that in the comments. Uh, maybe I missed something. It's definitely possible. Um, but otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the list. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.